and wet in here. Ah, so to be was, fair, it's more dry than wet. It was supposed to rain last night and we woke up to an inch of snow instead, so. And now it's gone. It makes me feel a little less crazy for looking at the weather and being like, we literally feel like we've been trying to dance with the weather lately and we can't figure it out. The forecast is totally junk, so. I guess we just look outside and decide whether we want to work today or not. This morning we woke up with a little bit of confusion as to what we should be working on. We really want to get these ledger boards installed. However, we also have a lot of errands we need to run. Whoops, I just touched our ledger boards and now I have oil all over my finger. We have rain probably today and most of the day tomorrow, but it looks like we should have a weekend at least four days of sunny weather, no moisture, and a high of about 60 degrees. So we feel like we should be able to get some serious work done. However, to work without interruptions, we have to do a lot of material gathering. And that material gathering takes a lot of planning. So today we thought, should we have a material day where we do the like run around, run around, trying to buy everything we need and stocking up on supplies like generator fuel so that we can work for potentially four days without any interruptions and for us we kind of need to be in one mode or the other we need to be in work mode or we need to be in errand mode so we decided to compromise so we can keep moving forward on this project we decided that we're gonna try to just get these ledger boards installed and then we're gonna do a supply run the other thing that we really have to spend time thinking about is what work can we do? I think we already shared that we have a long list of things we need to do before the SIPs arrive, but a lot of those things are kind of weather sensitive. There are certain things we really don't want out exposed in the rain longer than they need to be. So these ledger boards, we don't care, they're fine. Installing the extension to our sill plates for the SIPs to sit on, those should be fine too. But it's all the hard part about building a house yourself. It isn't just building the house, it's planning all of this stuff, knowing that all these things need to happen simultaneously. There's a certain order for things to happen and you have to take weather into consideration. Did you show them how beautiful these boards got to be I overnight? I did stick my hand in it and I was like, what the heck, like why are wow. my fingers are oily? But yeah, these are beauties. Which is kind of terrible because they're already getting wet, but the good news is they're oiled, so. Yeah. Wow, the oil really soaked in once it warmed up because I came out here this morning when it was still below freezing and the really? oil was kind of sitting on the top. Interesting. And now it's all soaked in and it smells delicious. It smells so good. There's actually a lot of good reasoning why we have not installed our sill plate extensions. So backing up just a hair in case you haven't been following us for a long time, we had to improvise. Our engineer called for a four by 14 sill plate and we could not find that material. So we're having to improvise by using a single sawn pressure treat. This is a four by 12. So we need these sill plates to extend a little bit farther and the sips actually sit on these sill plates. These we had to attach, we wanted to get them on there, but hiding right back there is several more treated pieces of lumber. But you'll notice that they're dry and these are not. One of the things that we've learned in this building project, and it's frustrating because we feel like our plan kind of fell apart, is about trapped moisture. Um, it's something that's an issue with any construction that happens in inclement weather, which pretty much is every construction. Most houses are dried in very quickly, and we had hoped that ours would be too. Of course, it's not materialized the way we had hoped. So now a lot of our materials are wet, it doesn't ruin them, but it can be a challenge if you later trap the moisture inside. So the sill plate extensions, because they stick out past the sill plate here, actually have quite a bit of exposed area where air can get to them. Um, so we're not too worried about them getting wet because the moisture can escape. But there will be a shoe that we're going to install on the sill plates here that actually mate to the sip panel. And that board will actually be locked between the sill plate and the sip. So if we put those boards on now and they get flooded with spring rain and then we put the sip on them, we have effectively locked in a bunch of moisture. It will find its way out, but it's gonna take a while because it has to get all the way through that wood or through the sip panel to escape. 
So we're trying to really think ahead about which pieces we can put on now that are okay to get wet versus which things should we try to wait till the very last minute, put them on, throw the sips on top, and try to trap as little moisture as possible. It feels really good to have a tape measure on my pocket and pencils. It feels so good. Like, all winter, I've just been missing my pencils and my tape measure. I don't know. Jeff, if you're watching this video. Is that we're, Jeff's? We're currently holding your oh. tape measure hostage. <laughs> this is one of our strategies to make sure that when we get done with our house, certain key people who may be difficult to get them to come back will we'll come see them back again. for our housewarming. Hey, big guy. Haven't seen you since the, uh, the uh, platform decking project. It's even got the right bit in it. How about that? I'm not perfectly. <laughs> Are we discovering this now? Should we have double checked your cuts last night? I did have a lot of faith. Are you pretty good? Are you pretty good? Yeah, pretty good. I did have a lot of faith in your measurements. I just put blind faith there. Yeah, and then move this out. There you go. Yeah. Is my camera on? Oh, good. <laughs> sketchy up here. I think the ones in the dining room and the living room we need to put on via ladder. Do the loft ones just from up here. And let's start at the end out there and then we'll go that way. So let's put this one because it's got some bigger knots. Oh that's a really pretty one isn't it? Oh, you know I think you're right. It's your favesies because of that right there. It's so pretty. Mm -hmm. I think in the end it doesn't really matter. Well, I mean, we definitely don't want a boring piece of wood in the living room, right? Well, you're not going to see the living room wood, but you won't might see you the master Well, wood. yeah, you won't hardly see it because it's so tight up into the rafters. Yeah, like the master bedroom, but I mean, it, it oh. really doesn't matter. You won't be able to see the master bedroom either. Yeah. Think about it. There's a ceiling right there. Oh, you mean in the loft master bedroom? Right. I guess we have too many master bedrooms. Yeah. <laughs> so let's grab another one, bring it over here. So we'll put this one at the end down here in the stairs. This one's looking a little bit tall. Actually, it's really like way too tall. So it looks like we didn't saw really good on this one. I don't know what happened, but the bevel, apparently we just totally screwed this board up. Looks like it needs to be put back through the table saw. Possible that this is not the right height. This one's no good. Okay. So let's put a different one here. Yep. Just give this one. So this one's the same problem. Right here, for some reason right here, Every one of these boards has a big flat spot. Should have looked them over more carefully before we committed. So this one's a little too tall on that rafter. So it looks to me like we should run all these back through the table saw. We'll look at every board. The ones that are wrong, we'll take them down and saw them. That one's got a flat spot right there. I can see it right now. It's the same spot. This one, ironically, is really good, but it's like super bowed. Yeah, this one's got a big flat spot on it. This one we might be able to get away with. Let me check it. I think this one's good. Really? Yeah.
looks like we've got a variation in width here. So this under is five. under five. So is that. The thing that could be causing this would be lift. Because if it's lifted off the table at all, it's gonna create kind of a weird bevel. So it's gotta be flat on the table if the dimension is exactly the same, which it appears to be, is that the board's not super straight, which it's pretty flippin' straight. Try one more time being very attentive to the to the to the tilt of the board. We finally diagnosed the problem to the silly little clamp that we used to hold the fence stable on our table saw. Once we found that, we got it sorted out and the boards are looking great. Is this one done? Yep, take it away. Yeah, looking really good right here. Looking really good right here. Cool. How's it look on that rafter? Looks really good. good yeah. Cool, good job. There you go. You don't want to do them the same spot. It'll split the wood. Okay. You want to stagger them. One on the bottom, one on the top. Good, okay. I'll let you do that one there. And then I'll do this one here. It's looking real good. Ooh, that's pretty good. I do like it. And then the inside Ooh. is nice. Looking really nice up against that wood. Uh, it's a little wide. What's going on? What's going on there? Looks like this rafter's not one inch. So we got an issue. So it's good till here, and then it puckers out. It. Look at that. So this rafter didn't get trimmed correctly, so I think we need to take a chisel and we need to bring it back in. Or, so, or plane. You can't plane that much wood. This rafter is the problem, not that one. This one's tight. So this rafter's too much wood. Bit of a funny story behind this rafter. In the workshop, we talked a lot about the orientation of the rafters with the bird's mouth on the bottom and the plum cut on the top. And we were all laying out rafters and we were all working really quickly to try to get this frame up before the weather hit. What happened was the orientation of one of the bird's mouths to the plum cut was cut backwards. Totally understandable mistake in a class. Shelter, in all of their wisdom, I'm guessing maybe not the first time this has happened to them in a class, were able to do a quick change around and then glue in a piece and put it all the way it should be. So the rafter, we didn't have to cut another rafter. <laughs> kind of chuckled. Gaius, our engineer, was, I could tell he was very, very disappointed. Really appreciate him because he offered a solution. At that point in time, cutting another rafter made my head hurt. So I'm glad we were able to work out a solution. It looks like that bird's mouth should be seven inches. And there it is. We're at seven and a quarter. Okay, coming over. So, yeah, we need to get it down to a seven inches. Here, let's try to just drive him in a little bit. I'm like chiseling 30 feet up in the rain. I bet this is what it's like to timber frame, though. I mean, Probably. it's part of getting yeah. frames to fit, and it's just kind of part of the deal, you know?
like I might have taken off just a hair too much. Probably got to clean this up just a little bit, and then I think we're back in business. What'd you hear, London Fog? I was thinking it, but I didn't want to sound like an addict, so I didn't <laughs> say it out loud. If we didn't have a challenge today, then we wouldn't grow mentally. This will be in the kids' room, so we don't have to look at it. They can deal with it. And if they don't want gaps at the end of their afters, they can build their own house. Board number two. That's it. Eight twelve. Should go there. Um, it's it's pretty good. It's about half. Sham wow. How's that? Is it an eighth too long? Yeah. So do you want to scoot them down? Okay. Flush, really? Perfect, not perfect. Beautiful. Are you beautiful? Yeah. Am I beautiful? Yeah. I'm gonna do the south end of the house first while Jesse's already up on the ladder. Yeah, that looks about half, so. Oh my gosh. Huh? I totally like, I was like, I'm gonna drop that and it landed right here. Yep. I don't know how this stays on your pants, it doesn't stay on mine. What I'm concerned about is that it's actually flush with this. Yep. Plate, yep. Not with the rack. Okay. Second to last one. Oof, good. Nice. Wow. Oh, yeah. Looking so nice down there. Oh my god, it looks amazing. Boy. Did a pretty good job. Not bad for a couple of rookies. predict that Bugable will find a lot of use in this little shelf. It's he about, he yeah, could I, totally fit. Oh, he could sleep in there. Oh, gosh. Wow. He could do his little sphinx. Yeah. Or his little, like, oh, what is it? I, oh, his crab foot. I'm more excited about Bugaboo enjoying our timber frame than I care to admit on camera. Probably true. <laughs> a quick fit check. Yep. Oh, flippin' red. Look at, look at that difference. That's insane. Um, that's my Perfect. Oh, wow. Just sticking out just a little bit? A little bit. Okay, how much? 16th, maybe? Maybe. Okay. Maybe less. Looks good to me. Pretty sure we just put screws from our concrete forms into our timber frame. Look at that. Bam. All right, what do you think? Back down, clean up, and go get more supplies? kind of just want to hang out up here today. What do you want to do? It's so beautiful. Maybe if it weren't raining. I love it up here. We need to go rescue our cannon. It's getting drenched. Yeah, somebody probably ought to throw it a life preserver or something. Is that it? I think so. There's no way you guys can even see anything out of that lens. You are completely covered in rain.